So a lot of people look at me now and they go, oh man, this must be dope to be a rapper, and it is dope, it's awesome. But, you know, I can't say that I don't want to sometimes go back and relearn some things. When we was doing shows for $5,000, I thought I made it. Right. We coming from zero, the negative. And you're gonna feel like you can't make it. I remember telling all my buddies, I'm moving to New York, all right, you be back. Nah, nah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> and if I do come back, it's for a concert. You know? And everybody would be like, all right, whatever. When I came back, it was for a concert. I'm kind of nearing the end on, on all things Kid Cudi, I think. Hello, artists. I have something for you. Art support. I, I, I didn't even know to what magnitude I would have success. So when it became such a big thing, I was just so blessed, so, so happy. When we was doing shows for $5,000, I thought I made it. Right. I was like, nigga, are you sure? Dennis, are you sure? Man, they said they're gonna give you $5,000 to do a 30 minute set. What? Man, that's fucking crazy. We coming from zero, the negative. We just appreciated it. It was like, man, we made something from nothing, from out of the thin air, and people care. The very first bar mitzvah, and, and, and they, they paid me 30 grand to do three songs. I come out and I do the song, and the kids are all excited. I was there and I was having a moment, and they were like taking pictures, and I was just like, wow, I feel like, it's like early on in my career, so I was just like, oh my God, these kids make me feel more famous than I ever <laughs> felt before in my life, you know? And then, after that, I was like, okay, I've always wanted this Rolex, a presidential day day, right? I, to I totally was like, okay, I'm gonna take this money and I'm gonna go buy this Rolex. So that's, and I still have that Rolex. I still wear it to this day. And um, it, was a, it was a great buy. It was one of, the, it was one of my most important buys because it was like, first off, I really, 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 really wanted that, that watch and I was dreaming about it before I had money and then I finally got it and I was like, oh man, this is so cool, you know? So to be here where I'm at right now, um, 38 years old, you know, when, when I was doing the albums that Joe heard, I was 24 years old. So like, we've just come a long way and, and it's a beautiful thing to see it all kind of like manifest and be yeah. like, you know. So one thing I would say is, I would just say, it's gonna get hard it's gonna get tough and you're gonna feel like you can't make it. But those are the moments that are gonna show you if you're really built for what you're dreaming for, you know? And if you're hungry enough, if you want it enough, if you're really gonna put in the work, you can get there. First thing I did when I went to New York, and most people think it was kind of like this, this amazing adventure, it wasn't. It was pretty much finding a job. And for the first couple years, I was working everywhere. I always had a job. I was a hustler. And, you know, I still apply that same work ethic with the music. I didn't have time to be like, yeah, my first album, yeah, yeah, people like it. It was like, okay, we did good, it didn't suck. What are we gonna do again? We gotta do another one. You can't get caught up in just all the, the other things. You know, I, I really was like, even still to this day, I have my phone, I have my fun, but it's focus. I'm persistent. Some people might have that one painting that they started to paint and never finish it because they get caught up in their head and it's, oh, I can't do this, so maybe I go do this. It's like sticking to something. One goal at a time. You know, I just wanted it bad enough. I put in the work, I put in the hours, you know? The same way an athlete would go to the gym, I went to the studio, and I was in there working on my craft. Mm -hmm. You know, and I dedicated my life to this. And, and that's what you see, it's like, excellence is the key. Intense, like be the best, like having to be number one all the time. But like, no, like, Go for excellence every time. So a lot of people look at me now and they go, oh man, this must be dope to be a rapper. And it is dope, it's awesome. <laughs> Top notch. But, you know, I can't say that I don't wanna sometimes go back and relearn some things. Leaving home and she's giving me a hug at the airport and she leans in and she goes, now I can always turn back around and we can go right back home. You can change your mind and everything will be fine. I'm like, no, I'm going, this is happening. Uh, 
and you know, walk into security and then looking back and just seeing her like, oh, and me just being like, oh. <laughs> However, as soon as I turned back around, I knew I was on a mission on a very specific quest, you know? It was bigger than just wanting to be a musician or do movies. It was about finally showing the world what Scott could do. I had this fire to pursue this musical career. I had no idea how to go about it. I was living with my uncle, who was up in age at the time. I embraced it. I embraced, I embraced the fear, the danger. I enjoyed the fact that I was going in uncharted territory. It was like a sense of wonder for me. And I can't say I was one of those people that was into like having thrills and you know, getting some type of stimulation from that. But it was nothing like saying like, yo, I'm gonna go out and pursue something and I know I'm gonna do it and nobody's gonna tell me I can't. And everybody that doesn't believe it, I'm gonna prove it to them sooner or later. And that's just what it is. Because at one point I didn't feel like I was smart enough to pass that test. Or I didn't feel like I was smart enough to go to this college. But with music it was like, nobody's gonna take that from me. Life will throw you a shit ton of curveballs. it's scary. But like, if you believe, man, you know? If you believe, and if you want it, and if you want to work hard enough for it, it can be so. Because there's no difference from me and you. You know, man, there were a lot of haters. There were a lot of doubters. There were a lot of people that were telling me, man, you ain't gonna do that. That's not gonna happen. He'll be back. I remember telling all my buddies, I'm moving to New York. All right, you'll be back. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm not coming back. <laughs> and if I do come back, it's for a concert, you know? And everybody would be like, all right, whatever. When I came back, it was for a concert. It was nerve wracking, man. I mean, I'll tell you the truth. This is what drove me to drugs. The pressure? Yeah, I was like, man, I'm going to either kill myself or I'm going to do some drugs. <laughs> and I don't want to live, so. And they were good men, but I saw drugs destroy them. So for me, I was... I always told myself, oh, I'll never smoke cigarettes. Started smoking two ports. Oh, man, I'll never do drugs. I'll never sneak anything up my fucking nose but fucking nasal necks. <laughs> <laughs> Started doing coke. Tragic happening or something I felt was tragic or stressful and then spiraling back into it, just needing any excuse to be like, all right, I'm going to go do cocaine now because I'm upset and I'm dealing with something I don't know how to deal. It's just like my way of copping out and avoiding my issues. Wow. Did I, this is not Scott Meskety. How in the hell did I let this become Scott Meskety? You know, you just have to make a choice. And I made that choice, you know, for myself, for my own health, for my daughter, for her future, for my fans, you know? We are all the commanders of our own destiny. You know what I mean? It's like you see these movies where they say, like that one movie with uh, 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 Lucy, where her, she has 100% of her brain power and she could do anything she wants. I really just told myself from jump, like, hey man, I'm gonna do this, and I applied the information that I needed to to execute that, and in places, in, um, uh, at times in my life where I didn't have the answers, I made sure to, to, to get the information or surround myself with people that had the information. You know what I mean? You can't hang out with people that ain't doing nothing. How you gonna get money hanging around people that ain't got no money? It took me a minute to even get to that place of being confident to say I'm a role model. Like, I would've saw that he liked my music and I would've been too like, um, I'm not, where I want to be yet, I'm, I feel like I'm a failure. I'm, I'm secretly dealing with things and I, I feel like a fraud. I wouldn't want to face him, yeah. you know? Everything happens for a reason because now it's like I can meet Joe and I'm in, in the best place in my life. And, you know, I can have this relationship with him where, you know, if he needs advice or he needs some help, you know, I can be there for him. It's just a random Tuesday and there's some kid in Minnesota that's like, yo, I fucking love you, dude. Keep going. We're listening. And I might have needed to hear that that day. It's no problem for me. I love that I can, you know, just hit up a kid randomly and just make their whole year, you know, and just, right, just right. give them some confidence or something. That's using it for good, you know? I want kids to look at me at, and understand what not to do. Really, you know, people, like I say, come up to me all the time and they're like, man, but you did it, man. You're special. You're different. And I'm not any different from you, you. We're all the same. <laughs>